a few things um, I want to put us in remembrance of. We're in the book of Numbers, chapter 13. Numbers, chapter 13. In Numbers 13, we, we see the 12 spies that were sent out to spy out the promised land. When they returned, 10 of them had what the Bible calls an evil report. What made their report evil? Because what they reported was factual, was factual. They went to the promised land and they saw giants in the land. And they came back and reported exactly what they saw. Maybe we'll read a little bit more. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. Go on. And they brought up an evil report of the land, which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof, and all the people that we saw in it are men of a great stature. Go on. And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried and the people wept that night. Just the report they got from some of the spies made them cry and weep all night long. Now, none of these people saw what the spies saw. They just received a report. They just heard words. And to show that they believed what the spy said, their action, because they began to cry and to weep. And he says, and the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron, and the whole congregation said unto them, would God that we had died in the land of Egypt? Or would God we had died in this wilderness? They had two options of death, Egypt or in this wilderness. I'm trying to show you there are no accidents in life. There are no accidents in life. Your faith, F-A-T-E, is determined by you. And it begins and climaxes with what you say with your mouth. It's unfortunate that many people trivialize what we say. It's quite unfortunate, incredibly unfortunate. And for those of us who have known this, after a while, what you say no longer seems important anymore. It's now about what you pray and how long you pray. It's no longer about what you say. In that case, we begin to trivialize what we say and begin to, should I say, eulogize or prioritize what we pray. But we forget that God has given what we say the power to override what we pray. And when your emphasis leaves what you say to what you pray and you minimize, deprioritize what you say, you'll be shocked 
that what you pray has no power. Now let's get done checking out this guy's life because this is a principle of scripture. It's a principle of scripture. Let's continue reading. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses, yes. So they said, would to God we had died in Egypt or would to God we had died in this wilderness. Okay. Verse 3. And wherefore had the Lord brought us unto this land to fall by the sword that our wives and our children should be a prey? Were it not better for us to return to Egypt? Let's go on. And they said one to another, let us make a captain and let us return to Egypt. Let's go on. Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the children of Israel, congregation of the children of Israel, and Joshua the son of Nun, and Caleb the son of Jephunneh, which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes. And they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through to search it is an exceeding good land. How can you say such? Didn't you see the giants? Exceeding good land? Do you know that your business is an exceeding good business? Okay. Next verse, please. If the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us, a land which floweth with milk and honey. The, okay, how did they get the expression, floweth with milk and honey? That's what God called the land. God called it a land that flows with milk and honey. So they're just regurgitating exactly what God said. Do you know that this year is a good year? Do you know your life is a good life? Oh, but, but if you know the challenges, but these guys, didn't they see the same challenges? You see, God has made us gods. Please, please, calm down. God has made us gods over the earth. For instance, when God created everything on earth, he brought the animals to Adam, and whatsoever Adam called it, God himself could not change the name. So he has given us authority to rule by our words. What you call a thing is what it becomes to you. So you can get up and say, oh, this year is a good year. In fact, it's the best I've had so far. That's what God will allow to come in. There are not enough devils. Of course, they will try to frustrate what you said so that you can say something else by bringing challenges. But when those challenges come, just keep saying what you've always said because that's exactly what you're going to have. The reason the challenges came or come is to contend for your words, to contend against the declarations you have made so you can change them. And once you change them, that's where the trouble begins. In fact, you thought what you were seeing was trouble. But once you change your confessions, you will be shocked at the enormity of the unbear and the unbearableness of the troubles that will assault your life. You'll be solving one, there are 10 others leaking. You'll be fixing another one, 20 more open up. And you're like, what's going on? He came for words. But let's, let's stick with these guys. Verse 9, please. Only rebel not ye against the Lord. What did they call rebellion against God? saying something contrary to what God said. You see, it's unfortunate many believers don't know this. We have so empowered Satan. Satan is so powerful, more powerful in churches than he is anywhere else. We have, we've so empowered him. And I keep asking believers, if Satan is so powerful, 
that he can stop you. Why didn't he stop you at salvation? What can you get in this world that will be greater than salvation? And he couldn't stop you at salvation. So why do you think he can stop anything else in your life? No. Let me tell you how he stops it. And let me tell you how the warfare starts. It starts with Satan stirring up things around you. And then you start shouting the wrong thing. And when you say the wrong thing, he said, by your words, you are justified. By your words, you are condemned. You are the one that said it. That's what he now took up. All the stirrings around you. Nothing happened. Okay. Look at Peter walking on the water to go to Jesus. And then he said, when he saw the wind boisterous. He saw the wind boisterous and he became afraid. And the scripture said, beginning to sink, he cried out, Master, save me. And Jesus said, oh, you of little faith, why didst thou doubt? Okay, the wind has always been there when he came out. That's why the journey was not successful in the first place. So Jesus came and said, uh, Peter said, Jesus, if it be you, bid me come. And Jesus said, come. And then Peter jumped out of the boat and started to walk on the water. The, the wind was already boisterous. Let's go back to these guys. Thank you, Lord. Only rebel ye not against the Lord. Rebel not ye against the Lord. Neither fear ye the people of the land. For they are bread for us. Look, look at what this man calls. He called all his enemies bread. What a talk. What do you call your enemies? Giants. This man calls them bread. He said, for they are bread for us. Who eats human bread? But that's, that's the way he saw his challenge. Let me tell you. A man is never conquered or defeated in life by his challenges or his enemies. He is de if he's defeated, he's defeated by his own words. Oh, that, that so so and so failed and gave up in life and died, or something killed him, or something happened and, and he, he went down. What happened? Always check it. Somewhere along the line, you will see the person talking death, you will see the person talking failure, you will see the person talking smallness. It might start as a joke. It might start as a joke. It might start as a careless statement. But after a while, the careless statement gets a hold of his tongue. And it becomes a consistent declaration in his mouth. And then we see an actualization of that declaration. This man, Caleb, and it wasn't just Caleb. Remember, it was Caleb, um, Joshua, and Caleb the son of Jephunneh. They're the ones talking. And he said, for they are bread for us. Their defense is departed from them and the Lord is with us. Fear them not. That's what the man said. How did he know their defense is departed? How did he know the Lord was with them? And he's the one telling people, fear not. Did you know the enormity, the size of the giants Joshua and Caleb saw? We've never been able to phantom in human history the size of these giants. I think the Holy Spirit didn't want to bother us with the facts. But for you to understand, you have to read extra biblical accounts to see this, the height of these. Some of them were taller than three story, four story buildings, human beings. They are called giants. That's what this guy saw. He said, this, he, he called them big size loaf of bread. You are giants for us. Your size means nothing. God sent us here. And he is with us. And whatever you have trusted as your defense has departed long ago. This was the man's contemplation. And he vocalized it. Look at the challenges 
assaulting you, what do you say? Now, let's, let's keep reading. This is a good year for you. The rest of this year is so blessed, so blessed. I said so blessed. Let's read. But all the congregation bid stone them with stones. You see that? When you start declaring, some will say you are very proudful. He's acting as if the thing is not touching him. You know, he's acting as if it's not affecting him. Are you not living in this country? Are you not feeling what everybody's feeling? You are so proud. You cannot admit, you cannot admit that things are difficult in your life. You cannot, simple, 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 simple truth. You cannot admit that you have difficulties in life. You cannot admit it. As if admitting it to you, you can change it. Okay. <laughs> I have a problem, a challenge of 200 million dollars then i meet someone maybe a relative who cannot afford it even 20,000 he can't afford 20,000 he can't then he's telling me say the truth which to you to you what will you do what can you do you see that's what i'm trying to tell you it's not about the enemy is trying to get you to accept and declare your troubles because once you declare by your words you were condemned So here, they took up stones to stone them for not agreeing with what they are saying. You know, this year has been a very difficult year. You expect me to agree? I'm not going to agree. For you? Yeah. For me? No. A thousand times no. Serving God can be difficult, my brother. Living holy life is a terrible... Yeah, it's very, nobody can live holy. Really? Really? Let's continue. <laughs> but all the congregation bet stoned them with stones. And the glory of the Lord, God now appeared. Because they wanted to kill his witnesses. The only righteous people he had. <laughs> so the, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle but of the congregation before all the children of Israel. That means God came down. Let's continue. Verse 11, please. And the Lord said unto Moses, how long will these people provoke me? You see what God calls provocation? And it will interest you to know that many believers are constantly provoking God. Constantly provoking God. What do they call provocation? An attitude that repudiates what God said. An attitude and confession that repudiates what God said. And God became angry. He said, how long? Will these guys provoke me? Raise your right hand. I refuse to provoke God. Yeah, good, good, good. And how long will it be? Eh, they believe me. You see that? How long will it take them to believe me? For all the signs which I have showed among them. Verse 12. I will smite them with the pestilence and disinherit them and will make of thee a greater nation and mightier than they. I will smite them with pestilence. Now, remember, Young's um, analytical uh, footnotes to the translation of the Bible says that in the Hebrew, these words are written in the permissive, not the way the King James rendered it in the causative. Causative means it's God that will make it happen. No, all God has to do is walk away and Satan does what he wants to do. You get what I mean? All right, next verse, please. Um, and Moses said unto the Lord, Then the Egyptians shall hear it, for thou broughtest up these people in thy might from among them. Verse 14, please. That Moses is beginning to plead. And they will tell it to the inhabitants of this land, for they have heard that thou, that thou Lord, art among these people, that thou, Lord, art seen face to face, and that thy cloud standeth over them, and that thou goest before them, by daytime in a pillar of cloud and in a pillar of fire by night. Jump down to verse 20. 
let's not read Moses' intercession. So, after Moses has interceded, God is speaking. And the Lord said, I have pardoned according to thy word. That means Moses said, forgive these people. He said, okay, I have forgiven them. Okay, but let's go on. But as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. Verse 22. Because all these men which have seen my glory and my miracles, which I have did in Egypt and in the wilderness, and have tempted me now these ten times, God kept count, hey. and have not hearkened to my voice. Next. Surely they shall not see the land which I swore unto their fathers, neither shall any of them that provoked me see it. But my servant, but my servant, Caleb, because he had another spirit with him. What's another spirit? He was different. We are called to stand out. Don't go to school and blend in. Don't get into business and blend in. Don't, don't get married and blend in. Don't, don't blend in. He said he had another spirit. The scripture says we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a peculiar people. And our job is to show forth the glories and the praises of him that's called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Now, he says, because he had another spirit with him and had followed me fully. How did he follow God fully? He said what God said. Expected what God told him to expect. Are you expecting good this year? I'm not hearing you guys. And he says, him will I bring into the land wherein he went, and his seed shall possess it. So this man's confessions and walk with God was, was such a blessing to his family. But my, go on, the next verse. Now the Amalekites and the Canaanites dwelt in the land, in the, in the land, in the valley. Tomorrow turn you and get you into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. Go on. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, Go on. How long shall I bear with this evil congregation which murmur against me? I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel which they murmur against me. Verse 28. Say unto them, As truly as I live, saith the Lord, as he have spoken in my ears, so will I do to you. Okay, did they, where did they find God to say in his ears? We are not able to take the land. We saw giants. No, they weren't talking to God. But God hears every conversation. Remember the old prayer? A silent listener to every conversation. Remember that? So he said, none of these people, as, as truly as I live, saith the Lord, as he have spoken in my ears, in my ears, so will I do to you. So what is God going to do in your life? What he has heard you say. So what is going to be your experience in life? What you say? Oh, where is God's hand shot on the key? He cannot help us? No. Are you so tongue-tied you cannot make a bold confession? That should be the question. Not are God's hand so, so short that he cannot reach out? No. A thousand times no. He doesn't even need to reach his hand. Thank you, Lord. Let's keep on. Next verse. He said, your carcasses shall fall in this wilderness. Where did they say they would like to die? Egypt or wilderness. So since God can't return them to Egypt, God said, I will choose your second option. They're the ones who wrote their own will. They're the ones who chose. I told you, you don't have to get up and just die. Don't say, you know, you know, well, I can't determine how I will die and when I will die. These guys determined where. They said wilderness, in this wilderness, we would love to. We would love to die here. Either we we'll go back to Egypt or we we'll die here. God said it took a lot of effort to bring you guys out of Egypt. To send you guys to go and die there. Since you have another option, it's better you guys just die off here. And that's in accordance with what they said. Okay, and your carcasses shall fall in this wilderness, and all that were numbered of you, according to your whole number, from 20 years old and upward, which have murmured against me. What was the murmuring? The things they spoke 
concerning the promised land. We are not able to take it. We can't get in there. The giants, the land eats up its inhabitants. But you told us you saw giants. So the land didn't eat the giants? We saw the sons of Anak. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah, you saw all of them. And then what? Joshua saw it. Caleb saw it. What did they say? See, large, large, large loaf of bread. Every challenge you are facing, brothers and sisters, they are bread for you. Yes. Without a test, there is no testimony. Relax. You are coming out on top. And your testimony shall be mighty. Yes. Keep looking these circumstances in the face and saying what you have always said. Hallelujah. Let's go on. Doubtless you shall not come into the land concerning which I swore to make you dwell therein. Save Caleb, son of Jephne, and Joshua, the son of Nun. Save. That means none of you will make it except this one. Okay, what's the difference between Joshua and Caleb? They said they will enter. They said we can conquer them. They said we can possess the land. This one said we cannot. I've told you. I've told you. I've told you. We're not defeated in life by the enormity of our challenges. We're defeated in life by the foolishness of our confessions. We're not defeated in life by the giants that assault us. We're defeated by what, I, by what we say. What do you say over your circumstances? What do you say over your struggles as a Christian, as a believer? What do you say over your financial challenges? What do you say over your marriage? What do you say over your children? It's not how rebellious the children are. It is what you say concerning their rebellion that counts. It's not the challenges you're facing financially that's the issue. It has no power to destroy you. It has no power to triumph over you. It came to watch if your confession will change. All of us must be tested in our confession, in our work with God. We live in a world where Satan, quote and unquote, is the God of this world. Remember, Adam gave him the authority of the earth. So he has a right on this earth to test us, to try us. We also have a right to defeat him over and over. Regardless of how many times he comes, we have a right to keep conquering him by maintaining our confession. Just keep saying what you're saying. What are you saying? What God said over your life. The Lord is your shepherd. You shall not want. And my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. I am the very righteousness of God in Christ. On my pathway is life, there is no death at all. A thousand shall fall at my side, ten thousand at my right hand. It shall not come nigh my dwelling. I do well in life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. All my troubles, all the stumbling blocks before me are stepping stones. I come out of every challenge better than I get, got into it. And my God will restore to me the years the circumstances, the delays that the canker worms and the palmer worms have eaten. Hallelujah. Say what God said and you will have what God says you will have. It, nobody has ever, nobody has said what God said and had something other than what they, God told them they will have. It's not possible. Let's go to our scripture, Mark eleven twenty three. Mark chapter 11, verse number 23. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever, and um, 
I, I learned something a few days ago concerning King James Bible. Maybe I'll talk to you guys about it because I want you to understand how the King James is different from other translations of the Bible. Now, I have nothing against other translations. I use them in my study. I hardly use them to preach. I can make reference to them, but I've stuck with the King James because I understood something about grammar. In English, second person, plural, and singular are confusing. You get what I mean by second person, plural, and singular? Hmm? You get what I mean by that? Okay. If I see, come, Pastor. Pastor, I'm, I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. All of you in front stand. I'm talking to you. What's the difference? Did you hear I'm talking to you? I'm talking to you. So, so who is the you I'm talking to? Okay, sit down. Let me, thank you, sit down. I'm just trying to show you the difference. So that this is where the King James translators wanted to make a distinction. When God is talking to an individual or when he's talking to everyone. That's where the second person singular and plural comes in. Good. Now, in the King James, they introduced, these words were not commonly used in English language then. But the translators wanted to distinguish between first, second person plural and second person singular because it makes a whole lot of difference. So they have these words. Di, thou, dine, die. Die, I mean T-H-Y. All these words start with T-H. So D, I'm talking to D. Then they also use the modern English, which has become the modern English words for second person plural. They use you, your, yours. So, uh, uh, is my English class working? <laughs> huh? Are you sure my English class is working? Fantastic, fantastic. Because I wanted to show you this. Come back to Mark 11. I wasn't preparing this English class we had now. I don't think I did a good job. We'll do it another time. Verily I say unto you, second person, plural. It's talking to everybody. That whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou this mountain. Second person singular. He's talking to one mountain. Because Jesus said, whosoever shall say to this mountain, be thou. Talking to a mountain. Are you get what I'm saying? Be thou removed. And be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he said. Now, forget our English class. We're done with it because your mind is still going there. I'll give you all the examples later, but today, don't miss the class. Don't miss the lesson. Now, Jesus said, whosoever. Because he was talking to, for verily I say unto you. Whosoever. He wasn't talking to Peter who said, Master, uh, 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 who said, uh, Master, behold, the tree which thou causes is withered from the root. So he would have said, I say unto thee, Peter. He would have said that. He would have, I say unto thee, Peter. I would, he would even have to make sure he said, I say unto thee. That means he's talking to one person. If you, if you shall say, then we have to extrapolate that he's talking to all of us. No, in this matter, he didn't want us to extrapolate nothing. He said, I say unto you, all of you, whosoever in your midst that can say, Unto this mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea. And shall not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things which he said shall come. Boy, 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 the rest of this year is a good year. Good year. The keys, can you hold on to it? 
then challenges come, things swell around you. And then you said, oh, I really thought, I've been saying that this year is a good year. I've been saying that I'm going to walk in righteousness this year. I'm going to walk in holiness before God. I, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's, what's up with me. You see? You see that? You see where the problem lies? Thank you, Lord Jesus. He's changed what he's saying. And that's what the Bible calls, he that wavereth. He said, receive it nothing of the Lord. Because it's like the waves of the sea. Today he says this, tomorrow he says the other one. Today he says this, tomorrow he says another one. He wavers. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. I say glory to God. Let's look at one more scripture and then we can get up and speak words again. Ah, I'm so blessed. I said I'm so blessed. Mark chapter 5. Let's go to this woman that had suffered for 12 long years. So Mark, 12, Mark 5, and let's read from verse, um, let's go to verse 20. Okay, thank you. Let's start from here. Uh, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse. Verse 27. And when she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment, verse 28. For she said, if I may but touch his clothes, I shall be whole. And straight where the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague, verse 30. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude trunk in thee, and sayest thou, Who touched me? Verse 32. And he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And Jesus said unto her, Daughter, thy faith oh your mind is working properly now he could have said daughter your faith so if he says you are we, who is he talking about all the daughters no say thy faith had made thee whole go in peace and be whole of thy plague okay return back to 28 return back to 28 for for she said if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. This woman has suffered for 12 years. Lost all her wealth, lost, lost all her beauty. This time she was, she was a shadow of herself. Skin stretched on skeleton. The worst, the worst of her was all that was left. But she, she wasn't bitter. She wasn't angry. When she heard about Jesus, she just put it in her mouth and said, this thing needs to change. The King James said, for she said, that's not the proper rendition. She kept on saying, how long she said, I don't know. But she kept saying until the change she wanted showed up. Why do you say after a while and then you shut up? After a while, then you twist, you, maybe you watch something on Facebook or YouTube, and then you said, ha, ah, things are really tough. Why will you say such a thing? Why will you say such a thing? The young lady believing God to have a child, then I... Maybe in the middle of the month, she flowers. She said, oh, no, I thought, I thought, I thought I was really pregnant. Oh, you weren't really pregnant. Uh, he, he felt pain. He said, I thought I was healed. I thought. This is also the reason many people have lost their healings. Because what happened? 
when there was a counterattack, something, they felt a sharp pain, they felt the symptom of what they've been healed from, and they're like, wow, I thought I was healed. Obviously, I'm not healed. And I need to believe God for healing again. It doesn't work like that. I wish it does. And then in trying to believe God for healing again, the fullness of the disease returns. And that's why, that's why people go for meetings, get healed. Everybody is excited at the healing power of God that manifested in their bodies. Three months, four months later, some two weeks later, they're even worse than when they got healed, before they got healed. And some news agencies go and interview such people. We saw you jumping over there. You know, they did that a lot to Pastor Benny Hinn. A lot, a lot. People will get healed in his meetings, and then they go back. Some of them came out of wheelchairs, pushed the wheelchair. They, everybody was excited. And they were actually healed. Some pulled out oxygen masks from their faces. And then go back home. They can't even breathe with oxygen mask. It's almost you. <laughs> I was trying to make a joke. It's almost like you give them nitrogen. Now, that's a joke. <laughs> this joke is terrible. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> no, they couldn't breathe anymore. The, the other ones are, they, it's not even, it's no longer wheelchair. They are now on a flat bed. What happened? After they got healed, they went back and suddenly a little symptom returned. They said, oh, I'm sick again. I'm sick again. The symptom is returned. Oh, my, I thought I was healed. And then they become worse. Brother Hagen attended a meeting, uh, or a robot's meeting, where a, a friend of the wives, a relative of the wives, who was blind on both eyes, was healed. Instantly healed, she could see. Then they were looking for her in the crowd to congratulate on her healing. They couldn't find her, then she goes home. So three weeks later, or something like that, they went back to visit with the family, and she was blind again. They said, we were there, we saw you. You walked away by yourself. What happened? They said, ah, oh, I just started to feel something around my eyes. I said, maybe I wasn't really healed. Whoa. And two days later, fully blind. It's not God's will to heal me. Remarkable. People also say that concerning their business. Oh, I have this challenge in my business. Maybe it's not really God's will that I should grow big. Maybe I should scale down. Maybe I shouldn't prosper. God, God, you know, God has ordained some people to be poor and some to be rich. No, God did not ordain anybody. We ordain it with what we say. Years ago, someone used to tell me, I'll be talking to the person. God wants you to prosper. He said, ah. They called me pastor then. Ah, pastor, all fingers are not equal. Some are small fingers. Some are, I leave that in your talk. God made some people to be small fingers. I said, who, who told you God made you the small finger? What about the biggest finger and the fattest finger? Don't you know one can be two? In fact, you can be all five. He said, I don't understand you. All I know is that God made some people, okay, okay. If we're all rich, who will work for each other? I said, no, it's not like that. You think rich people are not working for you? Okay, answer me. Who provides your internet, right? Do you know they're working for you? Oh, they're making a hell of money because of scale. They had the courage to scale up. There are also small internet providers who are also working for some people, right? Don't, don't call what you're doing for someone or what someone is doing for you the reason they are poor. The reason begins with your mouth. You have what you say. I'm never broke. I didn't hear anything. I'm never broke. I'll, I'm, I'll never be poor. Wealth and riches are in my house. I'm not hearing you guys. Oh, some people got angry now. They're saying houses. Praise God. I've been out of time for like five minutes now. Please, let's stand up on our feet.